So we have the trial version of our physically plausible ocean shader. And it's just set up in a very simple scene. I have a big NURB sphere here in Maya and just one environment light. And this is our geography bay in an environment HDR that you can get on our website, lollipopshaders.com. And the way I've set it up is I've just put the ocean shader on this massive sphere. And that comprises of two things. One, our surface shader. So the surface material points to this ocean shader, which is this SLO file that you have uh, when you download it. So you just load that in. And you can do that by going to the RenderMan menu under Shaders and dropping down a RenderMan shader, which is this node right here. We can see up here, RenderMan shader, and then clicking on the folder icon and bringing that SLO. Now, the displacement is the actual part that makes the waves in the geometry. So um, you can apply the shader to a simple, just a flat grid. That's the beauty of the shader. You don't have to do any sort of animation on the geometry. The shader will do it itself. And as you can see here, we have a cool little preview of the oceans. They're kind of, the waves are kind of stacked up. But we'll go through some of the parameters. Uh, and in the displacement shader, you can see up here, it's a type render man displacement. So if you drop this in, like here, and you can load in the SLO file in here. We've already done that for you. In the scene that ships with um, the, the trial package. So I've got the Choppy Ocean Trial SLO. I've pointed it there. And notice the RenderMan attributes, displacement bound. Uh, these three attributes are set by under attributes, doing RenderMan and doing add displacement attributes. And you'll need that if you're going to do uh, bigger waves because uh, you'll see there'll be kind of tearing in the geometry if you don't put those in. So that's how you put those attributes in. And in the actual trial version of the shader, we don't have all the parameters exposed here. So it's got limited functionality, but I did expose about five of them. And you can see they're called wave direction, wave speed, wave one height. That's what the H is for. Wave span and wave length. So just to get an idea of roughly what those do, um, I'm just going to go and do it on this little sphere geo that we have in our hypershade just to get some quick feedback and you can play uh, with these in your real scene. The direction just changes um, the actual direction of the wave. So as you can see, it actually just rotates them. So by default, it's zero, but one is actually one degree, two, et cetera. And you can see that nicely rotating here. So imagine animating that. You can keyframe this parameter uh, and animating that and you can change the direction of your waves. Uh, the speed is um, when you're actually animating it, you can put the uh, current frame number in here uh, and then that'll change the speed so they'll actually move along. Wave 1 height is the height of the wave, so if I put 0, we'll get nothing. And y as you can see as I change that, that changes the height of the wave, so that's really important to dial depending on how far your camera is. So we can just set that to 1 by default. Now the span is uh, how close together they're stacked. Now you can see here they look very stacked close together, but if you look at our final render, um, they're kind of more smooth because that just depends on the size of your scene. So this is not really an exactly obviously how your render is, and you'll just have to play that with that in your scene. But if we change the span to, let's say, 0.1, they're going to be a lot farther apart. So in our actual scene, it would probably be too flat. And the smaller we make that number, Let's take that down and watch it change. It just kind of stacks them closer together. Uh, so again, you have to do that in your scene to really see that. Uh, in this case, it was 0 0.025. And the length is the length of the wave itself. So we've got 0 0.4. Let's change it to 1. Um, so it just makes them longer. Um, so in our scene, that would be this way. You see how they fade in and out? See how it kind of comes up here and goes down. So that's the basically the wavelength. And let's take a look. If we make it really short, it'll just look uh, like something that's quite noisy. And in this case, we can take down the wave span just to see it in here. So now that just looks like a noise, but um, the longer you make it, the looks more like waves. And you can try that in your scene. So that's a displacement shader. And let's take a look at the actual surface shader. So if I click on this one. So we just have three parameters. Uh, one is a help, just saying that to get the full version, you can check out our website. But these are just the 
basically the two different colors that it mixes in between. So you don't have much control over the surface shader here. Again, this is just a trial version. So to have all the parameters, um, there's a lot more. Uh, you can see our other, other videos on the page and on YouTube, all the different parameters of the surface shader. Uh, you can download it from our website. Uh, but here, ob obviously, you can change the color of the deeper water that you see underneath and the regular it's kind of top layer color uh, in in this uh, ocean shader. So go ahead and play with those with the trial. Try it out. And um, if you need more parameters or you're ready to actually use it in a more production-oriented scene, uh, go ahead and get the full version.